What is happening everyone, welcome back to another video and today we'll be checking out the EasyBook 3 Plus and comparing it to the EasyBook 3 Pro. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, here's a quick simplified overview of the specs. To put it simply, one is a faster laptop with a slightly larger display that uses a TN panel, while the other one has a nicer smaller IPS display, but is just not as powerful. So which one is a better value and what was my experience like using them? Well, let's find out. So overall, other than specs, these laptops look very similar at first glance, but there are a few subtle changes here and there, which we'll get to in just a bit. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about comfort while using these laptops under heavy load. The maximum temperatures that I've got on the EasyBook 3 Plus were 100 degrees Celsius, which is really bad. The maximum temperatures that you'd want to have on a laptop or a desktop is 80 degrees Celsius. And with temperatures like that on a powerful CPU like the one on the 3 plus you can expect some heavy thermal throttling and that is something that i've noticed and got while working on this laptop so if you're playing games you're going to notice a dip in frame rates eventually while you're gaming and if you're running heavy applications you might notice some loss in performance and that is kind of unfortunate because we do have a really capable cpu but it seems like it wasn't properly cooled that said both of these laptops do not have any fans they're ultrabooks and basically both of them are passively cooled if you guys would like a video where i mod this laptop and improve its temperatures then let me know in the comment section below on the other hand, with the EasyBook 3 Pro, the temperatures are actually much better. Uh, the maximum temperatures that I've got are around 73 degrees Celsius. Now you may hit 80, but in my experience, while running multiple games, the maximum temperature that I've got was around 73 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty good. It's not that bad. But even then, I might actually try to improve the temperatures on that and see if we can get any better results. So the winner here when it comes to temperatures is the EasyBook 3 Pro. So which one is more comfortable? Well, obviously the EasyBook 3 Pro, and that is not only because the CPU is less warm, but that is actually also because the CPU is placed on the far top right side, which means if you're someone who's gaming or usually has their left hand on the WASD keys, you're not gonna experience any warm hotspots that are uncomfortable. With the EasyBook 3 Plus, the whole keyboard part of things is uh, pretty warm and it can get pretty uncomfortable eventually if you're running heavy applications. And pretty much that transfers to the touchpads as well. The touchpad on the Pro is much more comfortable because it's cool to the touch even under heavy load. Compared to the Plus, that area is just really warm and about 45 degrees Celsius. So the winner here, once again, will go to the EasyBook 3 Pro. And again, the same case here is for the thermal throttling. Speaking of touchpad and keyboards, the EasyBook 3 Plus has a larger layout and that is obviously thanks to its size. And with that, you get extra keys on the right side as well as a better set of arrow keys. On the other hand, with the EasyBook 3 Pro, you get a tighter keyboard, but with more travel distance, which is pretty interesting. The keys here actually go flush with the top of the keyboard when pressed. On the other hand, with the Plus, the keys don't completely go flush. And I have definitely noticed the difference between both of them. Now moving on to the touchpads, the touchpad on the Pro is simply much better. At first, you may think the Plus is a better touchpad since it is faster, but the one on the Pro is much better and that is because it is actually way more precise and it is also way more responsive. So there you go. Now let's go ahead and talk about the main visual differences between these two and that is the displays and that is obviously the biggest difference. One is a TN panel and one is an IPS panel. As you guys know, IPS is much better in pretty much every way possible, especially when it comes to laptops since you're usually looking at the screen at an angle. The screen on the EasyBook 3 Plus is actually brighter. It's slightly brighter, not a big difference, but it is brighter. The whites do look pretty good if you look at it head on, but any slight changes, the display will completely wash out or get dark, get bright, and it can get really annoying. Now, on the other hand, with the Pro, the display is much better in pretty much every way, except brightness, obviously, it's not as bright. The viewing angles, as you'd expect, are very nice. Colors are also very nice and vivid, and overall, it is a much better display. So once again, another point for the Pro. And speaking of displays, both lids here cannot be opened with a single hand. You need two hands to open up the laptops, but once again, the lid on the Pro is much more sturdier, and overall, it is less prone to wobbling. Which brings us to these speakers. So the speakers on the Plus are actually very similar to the display that it has. They are very tinny and overall they sound pretty bad. And yes, they do distort at higher volume levels. On the other hand, with the Pro, it is actually much better and they sound much more crispier, nicer, louder, and just overall more clear. Now, they're not going to blow anything out of the water, but they are definitely a good pair of speakers that are going to get the job done when doing things such as watching a quick video. Now, the speaker placement is also different here. The speakers on the Plus are actually on the back around the display, just like a Mac Pro, and the speakers on the Pro are actually on the bottom. So there you go, another point for the Pro.
And now let's go ahead and talk about what's on the inside. So you're going to notice that the boot speeds are different here. They're about double the speeds on the Plus, and that is because the Plus actually uses an SSD compared to the Pro, which uses an eMMC storage. And if you want to expand your storage, well, you actually have two options. One of them is a pretty awesome option. The other one is an OK option. Let's go and get started with the OK one, and that would be the SD card slot. It's a micro SD card slot that runs at 2.0 speeds, which is unfortunate, but it is still good enough and good to have. But if you want something much better, and uh, it's going to come at a cost, obviously, then you can expand or upgrade both of these things with an extra M.2 SSD on the bottom. Very easy to access, to install, and yes, you can even install your Windows on it or clone it, and then you'll have your yourself a really awesome, pretty quick, fast Ultrabook machine. And it's just really nice to have some upgradability on these things. Which paired up with the non-upgradable RAM that you have, I would say it's a pretty good deal, especially for the Pro. You got 6GB on the Pro and 8GB on the Plus. So you're going to definitely be covered for a while. And now let's go ahead and talk about something that you guys have been probably waiting for in this video, and that would be battery life. So the battery life on these things are pretty interesting. They both got me the exact same results in both tests. The first test was to actually use these things as regular everyday to day laptops, and they got me around five and a half to six hours of battery life. And that is with Wi-Fi, YouTube, Reddit, browsing, typing and whatnot, and constantly changing the brightness from medium to high as I see fit. And overall, it was actually a pretty smooth experience on both of them. The second test that I've done was a more concrete, solid test. I disabled Wi-Fi on both of them and ran a 1080p video at full brightness until the battery ran out. And they both got me the exact same results. Four hours of video playback at 1080p at full brightness. And charging times are also pretty good. It takes about two hours to charge these things from around 10% battery life. But yeah, I would have to say it's a tie when it comes to battery life with these things. And lastly, for the I.O. ports, they pretty much have the exact same stuff, for the exception that the HDMI on the Plus is a micro, while the Pro has a mini, and some things are switched around between the right and left side. And now all that's left to do is to go ahead and check out some gaming benchmarks and see how these guys perform. And that is pretty much it for this video. So I think I pretty much covered everything that you'd want to know about these things. Basically, if you're buying a Plus, all you're paying for is pretty much a downgraded screen along with an overheating CPU that is pretty capable, but unfortunately, it's not properly cooled. So in my opinion, the Pro is actually a much better buy. And believe it or not, this is the first laptop that has an Apollo Lake processor that I actually have enjoyed and I can totally recommend. Previously, I have never recommended one, but today is the day that I can recommend one. And for that, I would give this one the Commando Stand Up approval. I can definitely recommend this laptop. It's got some pretty good specs, 
you can upgrade it, it has 6 gigabytes of RAM, and it actually performs very nicely. You can browse, you can watch videos, and the speakers don't suck too much. And the display is pretty nice as well because it's not a 3K display like what Chewy likes to do. Although Chewy has some really nice displays on their laptops, they don't perform very well. They just pretty much kill all the performance that is left in the Apollo Lake by throwing a high resolution 3K display, which results in pretty much everything that you do becoming ultra slow. So yeah, in my opinion, the Plus would have been a great laptop only if they had better cooling and had an IPS display, then I might have recommended it. But if you really want the performance and similar specs, then I would actually recommend checking out the Xiaomi Mi Notebook 12, which comes in a much nicer, sleeker looking body, charges through USB Type-C, and overall is just a more refined, beautiful laptop. That said, you gotta reinstall Windows on those laptops, but even then, I would actually recommend getting these only if they are on sale or with coupons. So yeah, links and coupons for everything I've talked about will be in the description below if you guys are interested. And yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this video. So thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you want like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.